So we will pay homage to the Buddha by reciting Namo Dasa three times. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambo Dasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambo Dasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambo Dasa Today we are going to talk about the recollection of bees. Actually, we can find the definitions of Nibbana in many different places. But today we have to explain the meaning of the definitions of Nibbana. So we have to introduce the first things. You know, there are dhammas, conditions, or unconditions. In Bali, we call Sankata and Asankata. And also, they are fading away. In Bali, we call Viraga, and it's also pronounced to be the best. That is a Nibbana. So this is the very beginning of introductions. So we have to know one more thing about Buddha's teaching. Frequently, when the Buddha talks about ultimate reality, or when the Buddha is going to explain something, there's some introductions, such as the sublime, or Gambiro, Dudaso, Dura Niboro, like this. Gambiro me, profound, or deep. Then do the so difficult to see or hard to see. And do that nuboto very hard to penetrate or very difficult to penetrate or understand. So these are commonly mentioned in the Buddha teaching. Not only that, we also have Ataka Vajra is unthinkable or beyond the imaginary. So from time to time, we are going to translate or understand Nibbana according to our imaginary or our own knowledge. So that one is not that easy to understand because it's very deep and very profound. Okay, now we will start talking about the characteristics, the function, the manifestation of Nibbana. So maybe the next slide. So when we talk about Nibbana, it mentions Santi Lakana. The characteristics of Nibbana is calmness or peacefulness. This is called Sandilakana Nibbana. As we have already known, the calmness of mind and calmness, peacefulness of the mind. But now Nibbana is superior, the best, the strongest calmness, or the strongest of peacefulness. The Ajudi Rasam, the function of Nibbana is deathless of undecaying. Ajudi is what we call death. But now here, actually, no death or deathless. So, for for example, when we have nama rupa, all the nama rupa will arise and perish. In the case of nibbana, no more perishing. As long as we are in nibbana, we're gonna say perishing. Only cessations of nama rupa. So that is why, hey, actually, mean deathless is one of the functions of nibbana. Animita Bachu Patana. The manifestation of Nibbana is as signless, so no sign. So there are many, many explanations of Nibbana. Today we are going to introduce all the explanations according to Visuddhimagga. So we also have many other explanations in many other suttas or many other textbooks. So here, one more thing. Since Nibbana is unconditional, it doesn't mention the Brahmic cause of Nibbana. For example, our body is changeable by food, by weather, or by like a mind, or by karma. But in Nibbana, no conditional things, nothing can change Nibbana. That's why we, it doesn't mention any Brahmic cause of Nibbana. But anyway, when we are going to talk about Nibbana, then we also have to know the quality of Nibbana. Of course, when we are going to practice recollection of peacefulness or recollection of Nibbana, then we must know the quality of Nibbana. For example, when we have already, we have already studied 
<coughs> sorry, <coughs> the recollection of Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. <coughs> sorry. So if we <coughs> recall it, we are. So we have to know the quality of Buddha, the quality of Dhamma, the quality of Sangha. Similarly, when we are going to recall it, the peacefulness of Nirvana, we must know the quality of Nirvana. So here I have a list out of what mentioned in Wisudi Maga. One, Mata Nemadana. The subsiding infatuation. So Mata also means madness, like a crazy. So we can also say Mata means proud or conceit, or bright or conceit. Sometimes we also translate as infatuation. So when we are proud of our quality, or when people are proud of their qualities, they look like crazy. But you can see practically in your environments, we can also see many people around us, they have very strong mana, brides or conceit. They are like crazy people. So here, Madani Madana, when we can take Nirvana, show no more madness, no more craziness, no more infatuation. So we can subside or we can subdue Madha. In reality, we can eradicate, totally eradicate by path and fruition knowledge. So in the case of mana, even anagami had mana, bright or conceit. But for noble person like Arhat, Bhattaka Buddha or the Buddha, they had already eradicated the mana, conceit or bright, then they don't have they don't have any craziness or madness. So two, Pipa Sa Vinaya. The eliminations of thirst. So here we have to know what means thirst. Of course, we are thirsty for sensual pleasure. We also hunger for sensual pleasure. So two, alayas or the three alayas mukata, the evolutions of reliance. So in this case, in these two cases, two qualities. The so five kinds of such a pleasure are to be eliminated or abolished. So whether we use the baliwa alaya or bibasa, it means such a pleasure. So as a, the sensual beings, we like such a pleasure. Our mind will inclined to such a pleasure frequently. So when we attain nirvana, we can abolish or we can eliminate nibbana. So we can eliminate all types of lust or hunger or thirst for sensual pleasure. As we have explained many times, although we have sensual pleasure, if we don't have attachment or gamma raga, such a desire, all the Design of object, all the sensual objects are useless. When we have sensual pleasure, sensual objects, and sensual desire, then it will work properly. So here in this case, bibasa or alaya, in the case of touch, sure, when we have lustful minds or sensual desire, we can also eradicate sensual desire, we can also eradicate sensual pleasure or sensual object. So that is called Pibasa Vinaya and Alias Mukata. Then we have number four. What do Bacheda? The next one, right? What do Bacheda? The termination of the round, which means samsara. So here, this means that free, we, uh, we are free from Three runs, as we have already, already know, sensual runs, material runs, and immaterial runs. This go what to bacheda. So as long as we cannot eradicate defilements, 
Or we cannot catch camel fox. Where do go around samsara? Where do we live on? In the sensual realms, material realms, or immaterial uh, in the immaterial realms. So in the case of Nirvana, we can totally cut all the gummy fox and defilements that can produce to be reborn and uh, let me rebirth, they can produce rebirth in sensual realms, material realms, and immaterial realms. This is called Vatubhacheda. This is also the quality of Nirvana. Then the next one is a Dhanakaya, the destructions of craving. As we have already know different types of Dhanna, different types of craving. For example, Gama Dhanna, craving for sensual pleasure. Bhava Dhanna, craving for existence. Bhava Dhanna, craving for non-existence, like inhalation view or eternal view. So like a Bhava Raga is a similar to eternal view, Vibhava Raga is an inhalation view. So when we have already eradicated this kind of wrong view, this kind of craving, sure, this is very powerful already. For about noble person, Sarabana, Sagadagami, Anagami, cannot eradicate the craving for life or existence. They still have attachment to their life. That's why they can be reborn in the existence next life, in the future lives. And our hearts may not have any attachments or craving for their life. Although no more defilements, no more gamma fox. They cannot be reborn anymore. Okay, briefly, Tanakayami, the distractions of craving, it cover all types of craving, craving for sensual pleasure, craving for existence, craving for non-existence. Vidaga, fading away. So this one is also very simple. Let me find a way of right? craving, something like that. The another one is a Niroda cessation. Also we have like a Nirvana. Hey, now it's a Nirvana, free from craving. Here I also cut Ni and Vana. Vana means craving or attachment. Ni me divide or no more. So that means we don't have any any craving in Nirvana. So these are also called, these are the, the meaning of Nirvana, according to Visuddhimagga. But here I have to elaborate something about Nirvana. So we have already mentioned Dhanakaya is also craving, fading away also, fading away of Nirvana, sorry, fading away of all the Sankara, Suggestion also, Nibbana also free from craving, right? So in number eight, we are also talk about craving. Number five also craving. Now what does it mean, Vana? It means like a joining together. So what is it joining? We have another one. The craving joins many different things together. So the craving joins to do only four generations. I have to explain four generations later. Panjagati, five destinies. I have to explain this one later. Also, Sata Vinyana Titi, seven stations of consciousness. Then four, Nawa Sata Vasa, nine abodes of beings. So craving will join all these things together. For example, Chitu Yoni, one generation to another generation. Kaigati, one destiny, one destination to another destination. It joined together. Okay, now we have to introduce the four generations. The next one. So here we have four Yoni, four generations. They are called Andaja, egg born, such as birds. They are born from egg, right? So this egg born, so it's called Andaja, living beings. 
ya la puya one bombs with human being a bomb from mother's one some say the ya mild shell bomb like for example mosquito or many other insects they were born in moisture of a body got spontaneous bone like a diva so craving were drawing one of these four together for example now we are born as a one born living beings as a human being maybe our future life can be a bones multi bones spontaneous bone we can also be one born again similarly there are many ex born living beings many birds chicken so now they are born as they were born as egg born living beings but their future can be any of these four because craving were joined together for example now we have attachment to human life if we still have attachment to human life our future life also can be a human being and a human being so similarly when we have attachment to divine life we can be reborn as a deva if we attachment to once you are born we can be reborn as a once you are born living beings so craving will join any of these generations this kind of bond rebirth together so we have to understand you know craving is a the main feather that can produce new life because dana can change to ubadana there will be the actions that can be the results so briefly the craving were join these four life one after another one by one so this is called craving in going with four generations now we have five destinies. Deva, heavenly beings. Manusa, human being. Nidhiya, hair being. Beta, ghost. Tirichana, animal. So it also, could also join together. For example, human life and Deva, De 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 Deva lives, heavenly beings can join by craving. Now human being, next like can be divine beings. Similar, similarly, human and hair being. Now we are human being, next like can be hair being. We can join together. Similarly, hair being to ghost. Also, hair being to animal. Animal to human being, divine beings, and so forth. So we have one simile. You know, when we are going to sue two clothes together, we have to join first, after we have to sue it. It become one piece. Similarly, we are born in many different life. By joining together, it's joined by. In the case of suing the clothes, a threat is a join joiner. In the case of human being or living beings, craving is a joiner. It will join all the lives one after another. This is called five destinies. The seven stations of consciousness. The next one. <clears throat> Actually, I have to explain a little bit more the, the thing about this one for the Nanada Gaya, Nanada Sanyi. So it mentions different body and different perceptions. So practically, here in the in the bracket as I mentioned, different body and in different perceptions of river linking consciousness. So we have different perception, then we different river linking consciousness. We also have different body. It's like human being. Now practically we can see we have different body, different structure, different appearance. We also have different river linking consciousness. This is called Nanada Gaya, Nanada Sanyi. As we have already known, like a three rooted person, two rooted person, or one rooted person. We also say, we also say one rooted, no rooted person. Ahituka. 
So although we are born as a human being, we have different Riva Lincoln consciousness. Not only that, we have different body, different appearance. This is called Nanata Kaya, Nanata Sanyi. Similarly, divine beings. They also have different Riva Lincoln consciousness. They can also have different appearance, different body structure. So you may have learned many things about divine beings. For example, some divine beings have very bright lights. Then some of the divine beings does not have bright light. Similarly, there are some divine beings. You know, they are the color is a little bit different from other but golden color. Maybe golden, many different color as it can be. So we have another one like a, some types of beta ghost. So they also have different revolving and consciousness. Of course, eh? some of them are, for example, like a we can say like a beta, right? We, uh, we can like a, we, we can talk about the beta, sure, some, some of the beta. So they may have, oh, sorry, we might dig a beta, but some are, they have uh, mentions. They also have, a, we go, we say like they have their own mention, divine mention. They also have different appearance or different color or the different body structure. They also can have different Revealing consciousness, we call we manika beta, right? We can we can say in Bali we manika beta. The beta they have divine mention. That means they are also a kind of beta, but they are similar to divine beings. <clears throat> so these are the first type: nanada gaya, nanada sanyi. The two: nanada gaya, ekata sanyi. What does it mean? Nanada kaya ekata sanyi. So different body and single perceptions of Riva Lincoln consciousness. So they are the first jhana brahmas. As you have already know, the first jhana brahmas. So they have the same jhana as they, they are revealing in consciousness, but they have a different body structure. Right? We can also say like that. Then, okay, three. Ekata Gaya, Nanata Sanyi. So single body and different perception of revealing in consciousness. So like Abhasara Brahmas. They have single bodies, but different perceptions of revealing and consciousness. Okay, now, <clears throat> Ekada Gaya, Ekada Sanyi, single bodies, and single perceptions of revealing and consciousness. They are Subhakina Brahmas. So they have single body and single perceptions of revealing and consciousness. Okay, so <clears throat> now five, right? So that one is a very simple because you have already know boundless space, Brahmas, this is called immaterial Brahmas. So <clears throat> here we haven't explained anything about immaterial jhanas yet. But anyway, we are going to talk about seven stations of consciousness we have to know. Agasan and Jayarana, boundless space, Brahmas. Then, Vanyan and Jayarana, boundless consciousness, Brahmas. Angetina and Jayarana, nothingness, Brahmas. So, briefly, many of them are from Brahma worlds, the seven stations of consciousness we call in Pali. We call Sata Vinyana Titi. Okay, now again, we have Nine abodes of beings again. 
Okay. So in the nine nine abodes of beings are the same too. There are seven stations of consciousness, but two additional abodes. They are asanyasada. Asanyasadami, no perceptions, a kind of Brahma. This is the fifth Jana Brahma. We're going to say the fourth Jana Brahma. Then two, Nevasanyana Sanyarana. Neither perception, no non perception. This is immaterial jhana, the last immaterial jhana brahmas. They are also nine abodes of beings. Okay, briefly, the craving will join all these things together. Now we are born with different perceptions of revealing a consciousness, different body. But next time, it can be another type. Different perceptions are you know, the different body structure. But the same perception of the possible. Okay, mainly we have to understand all these things can be joined by craving, which means also, also a little bit similar to Kati and Yoni, right? We can be born, reborn in anywhere, any existence. So briefly, these are called the explanations of the, the, the like, or like we can like we talk about nibbana, niwana, right? Free from craving. So that means the craving will join many different lives together. That when we attain nibbana, we can just join all these types of craving, or we can be free from craving. This is the meaning of nibbana. Okay, now. The word also explains the nature of Nibbana in many ways. Maybe this will be a little bit messy for you. Anyway, I have to introduce all these things. <clears throat> so the first one we mentioned about Satya, the truth. So that means is it the nature of Nibbana is it totally peaceful, is it the truth, the truth? Totally truth, never changing, unchangeable truth. So this is called Satya. Para, the other shore, the other shore of Samsara. Actually, we have many different similes about other shore. For example, when we talk about, when we study like Jataka story, in the very beginning of Jataka Atakata, you mentioned and think about Bodhisattva. They are mentioned, for example, Jivyankara Buddha is like a very big boat. That he just carry many living beings on his boat and then save them to safety jetty or safety shore, safe shore. Similarly, now we human beings or any living beings in this world, we are frightened by aging, sickness, death, and many different types of defilements, internal enemy or external enemy. We are not safe. Now the Buddha teaching, the Buddha has like a big boat, big ship. Then the Buddha will carry all the living beings to another shore, other shore. Let me, we can say like a safety, safety place, Nibbana. So Nibbana is the other shore or safety place. Then otherwise, it's Dutasa, and hard to see, the hard to see. Of course, it's not easy to see for ordinary people. Only noble people can see it. But if we are good meditators or good practitioners, we can also know the cessations of Nama Rupas at the end of the life in the future. So we just see only partly, not as deep as Nova person. If we don't have enough wisdom, we cannot see it, we cannot experience it. But here, do this. Then we have another one. Ajara and decaying. 
We can also understand Jara as an agent. I mean, no more agent. As human being or as any living beings, we have agent. But now, when we attain Nirvana, after entering into Buddha Nirvana, no more agent. So now as a doer, the last thing. Okay, here we would have to talk about, if we say another way, Nirvana is a nature, permanent. I think many of meditators has already known that kind of statement. For example, Sabi Sankara and Nietzsche, all the formations are impermanent. Sabi Sankara Dukkha, all the formations are suffering. But when we talk about another, Sabi Dhamma another, all Dhammas are another, non self. We have this kind of explanations. Okay, now another one. We can also say, like, okay, now, now I said, Nipa Pancha, maybe number six. And diversified. So here we have to explain a few more things about Papancha. Papancha means extending the samsara or prolonging samsara. That's called Papancha. So Papancha can be explained in, Kavika can be classified, in, classified as a tree. For example, craving. Craving is also called a kind of Papancha. It also can prolong samsara. This is one thing. And I said, wrong view, Dichi. This is also one of the Papancha, it can prolong samsara. Another one is mana, conceit, pride, or arrogance, also possible. This is also one of the factors that prolong samsara or extend samsara. So when we talk about Nipa Pancha, the antiversified, here that means we can be free from the prolonging factors of samsara, the craving, wrong view, and conceit. This is called Nipa Banja. Now seven, Amata, deadlines. We have already explained before. So, as we have mentioned, Ajara, no aging, no decaying. No, he also mentioned Amata, deadlines. So sometimes, you know, when we talk about, okay, now I haven't talked about the Bajanga Sota to other, other groups. I have already explained Bajanga Sota to Indonesian group. Anyway, they are Ajadi Madara Bayadi Amadani Bayangata. We have this kind of explanation. Ajadi, no more rebuts. Ajara, no agent. Ab Abayadi, no more sickness. Amada, no more death or deadliness. So actually, Nirvana is uh, no rebirth, no aging, no sickness, no death. We can also explain very simply like that. Anyway, now here we have number seven mentioned Amada, deadliness. So this is also one of the explanations. Previously, Ajara. Then again, eight, Siva. The auspicious. So what does it mean auspicious? Then here I also mention because is we are free from defilements. That's why it's called auspicious. Siwa. So when we have many defilements, it will be ungraceful. Right? Because we have defilements, it's destroying auspiciousness. It will be unauspicious for us. When we can eradicate the defilements, it becomes auspicious. So Nirvana is auspicious. Then nine came up the safe. So here also mentions it's not oppressed by yoga. Yoga means bonds. As we have already mentioned. Yoga, right? Okay, one more thing. Yoga also can be translated as a yoke, a yoke. So we can yoke 
two bulls, we can yoke two horses or four horses to draw a cart. This is also called yoga in Bali. So we have four types of yoga. Kama yoga, the bounds of sensual pleasure. So sensual pleasure will bind a living beings and sensual pleasure together. This is called sensual desire. It's also a kind of bounds or binding together. We have Bhava Yoga. That means the bounds of existence. We have attachment to our life. This attachment also binds our life, one life to another life. Then Deity Yoga. We may have many ideas. We may have many knowledge, many point of view. We talk about Deity, mostly we talk about view, right view or wrong view. Here, especially, it means wrong view. So we also like our wrong view. If we like our wrong view, this also bounds or binds together. A living beings and wrong view bind together. Another one is it, are we yoga? Are we jaya yoga? Which means, as you have already know, ignorance. Not knowing the truth, not knowing the true nature of life and ultimate reality. Then not knowing full of the truth. Although not knowing the existences, past and present and future lives. Also not knowing the dependent origination's cause and effect relationship. This is called ignorance, moha, avicca. So avicca also can bind living beings and many other things together, one life to another life. So that is why when we talk about kema, the safe, that means it's not oppressed by yoga, it's a safe. When we have one of these yoga, we are unsafe. Then 10, Abhuta, the marvelous. Of course, it is a divide of conditional formations. Uh, then the normal conditional formations is marvelous. Even we have the conditional formations, if we like, this is marvelous, wonderful, right? But now is it normal, marvelous, wonderful. Not only that, Abu Dhabi is has never happened before. That means in the samsara, we have never experienced Nibbana. That is why we are in the samsara now. After experiencing Nibbana, sure, we have limited life. But that is why when we talk about Abu Dhabi, we have two different things. It's a divide of conditional formation. That's why it's become marvelous. Another one is it, it does not happen before. We have never experienced before. That is why it's also called Abuddha, marvelous. Then again, 11. Anidika, the intact. So here again, we can also say not having Defilements, not having any aggregates, not having any formation, sankara, it become anidika, the intact. So now we have to move to this one. Twelve, apyapaja, the uninflated. Okay, we have also another definition of this apyapaja. This is called nidukha. In the subcommentary, you mentioned Nidukha. Nidukha means no more suffering, divide or suffering. So, mostly when we talk about Abhyabhaja, I mean, Bhyabhaja means evil, I mean, no more evil. But here it doesn't mean evil, it just means Nidukha, no suffering, no afflictions. Then 13, 
the purity. Of course, we have already know. Now we are talking about purifications, right? So even if we can purify very gross defilements, sila, morality is powerful enough. So if we can purify our minds when we attain jhana, tida visodhi, this is also called purity. But here visodhi, this purity is nibbana. Even as a totally free from defilements. That's why it's a pure. So here pure doesn't mean it's a visible, right? It's a totally pure, totally free from all types of defilements. Then 14, Diba, the island. Okay, here we have to explain a few more things about the island. How uh, maybe uh, Singapore is also a small, a small island, right? Then also, I think many people have been to the island. Even in Myanmar, we have many, many islands. I have been to many, many small islands. Okay, the main thing is, he also mentions the island that is not shut away by the flat. What does it mean flat? In Bali, we call yoga. Also similar to yoga, the yoke or the bounds. Now here, we say flats. So actually, we have many explanations about yoga or yoga in Buddha's teaching. But when we talk about the jiva, the island, Buddha also say, Atta jiva and kiri rata, make you are as your own island. Buddha also say like that many times. So the main thing is that we have to make our own island. Our islands are very high or very big, then it cannot be swept away by the flat. If very small, it can be swept away by the flat. How does it mean flat? The flat of sensual pleasure. So we can also say it can attachment, right? So the flat of attachments for existences. We call Bhava Yoga. So another one is the flood of wrong view. Now the flood of ignorance. So these are called the flats. So when our islands are very small, it's so small that we're gonna overcome sensual pleasure. We're going to overcome attachment to the life. We're going to overcome wrong view. We cannot overcome ignorance. That is a call. Very weak. So when our islands are very high, when we attain Nirvana, that means no, none of this flood can sub away. Now, 13. Dana, the shatter. Also, similarly, Lena, the safety. These two have relationship. So that means Dana or Lena, it, means it protects living beings from suffering of samsara, suffering from samsara. This is called Lena. In the samsara, we are not safe. No protector, no shelter, no refuse, no safety. They are, it, it was mentioned like, but it's Sarana, you know, refuse. So we may have refugee camping, refugee camp, where they keep many refugees, right? They have refugees. Now in the samsara, we are helpless. When we attain nirvana, we have shelter. Our attainments will protect us from suffering from samsara. So this is the definitions of nirvana according to Visuddhi Maga. Okay, now we have to proceed to other topics. Nibbana according to Pitamata Sangha. I think many of people haven't known this textbooks. We have Pitama examination in Myanmar. Now I think like England or America and also some 
Taiwan and Singapore also, they can join the examination. I don't know how many countries are allowed. We don't, we don't know how many examinations in, in different countries and foreign countries. MMI is a very popular examination. Whenever we have to join the Vidyama examination, mostly we have to study Vidyama Thasangaha. So they are um, mentioned Pata Machuta Machanda, Asankata Manutara, Nibana Midi Basandi, Wana Muta Mahesayo. This is the explanation. So Wana Muta me free from craving. Mahesayo me Maha Esayo, that means seeker of greatness. So that means the Buddha will seek great modality, great concentrations, great wisdom, great emancipation, or great freedom. That's why it's called great seeker. Then in brief, we can say the Buddha says, Livana is, Bata Machuta Machanda, Achutami, Tetheless. Achantan, Ati Andan, that means goes beyond the end, that means beyond the death. So in the death, we can be reborn, but Nibbana is more than death. Cessation, no more rebirth, no more reborn, no more existences. That's why it's beyond the end, so beyond the end of the life. They also mention asankata and condition. So <clears throat> this one is also very common. We can understand asankata and condition. So never has a condition by nothing. For example, we we have body. Our body is conditioned by food, weather. We also like a mind, karma. Everything will change the situations. In the case of Nibbana, nothing can change. The Anuttaram unsurpassed. So that means, like a, nothing superior, nothing is a superior to Nibbana. Nibbana is a superior. So the best, excellence, the most excellence. So according to Bhidamana Sangha, we have very clear explanations, right? This is also deathless, go beyond the end, is unconditioned and unsuppressed. We have four qualities according to Vidamata Sangaha. Actually, there are many other explanations according in many different textbooks. But it will be too heavy for the learner, that's why I skip. Okay, now we have to proceed. The benefit of recollection of peace. So, one, his mind is not obsessed by greed, hatred, and delusion. Then, this is very, very clear. We can recall it, peacefulness of Nibbana. Of course, is we are thinking about peacefulness. Our mind is inclining to peacefulness. That's why we cannot. The greed cannot arise. Hatred also cannot arise. Television also cannot arise. Right? So this is a one thing. Then, okay, one more thing here. <clears throat> His mind also has gratitude on cessation. That's two, right? His mind has gratitude on occasion. So on the occasion. So that means our mind will be flexible or maybe ready to accept any meditation subject. Then three, he can suppress the hindrances. So in reality, when we can recall it very well, as we have mentioned in many other recollections, for example, we have rapture. In the very beginning, we call pamoja, right? Delight, or like a slight joy. It can produce rapture, pity. 
diabetes can produce basadi tranquility. Basadi can produce sukha bliss. Sukha can produce concentrations, samadhi. These are the process. Yeah, when we are recollecting Nibbana, the peacefulness of Nibbana, we cannot attain jhana, we just can attain as a concentration. Then I could go one more thing here. I think many people will ask these questions. Can an ordinary people practice this recollection? Right? This is very common questions. Of course, for noble person, it's very clear. They can practice recognize your peace, recognize your peacefulness or nirvana easily because they have attained. And for about ordinary people, there will be a few people who can practice. That means who value nirvana can practice the recognition of peace. So sometimes we value many other things. We don't know the value of Nibbana. We don't value Nibbana also. If we value Nibbana, we can practice. Another one is the vine learning or hearsay. In the very beginning of practice, we have already explained there are three types of meditations. Seeing, listening, and touching. Tita, Sudha, and Futa, three types of meditation. Now here, Nibbana, the recognition of peace, Uba Samasti also, by learning Sutta, because they're like here I say. So that means ordinary persons can have devotions or confidence in peacefulness of Nibbana, then he can practice, right? So these are the person who can practice this recognition of peace. Okay, now we have to proceed many other benefits. Okay, they mention he can sleep in bliss. But sometimes if we, if we are not very peaceful, we cannot sleep well, we should, we should do one of the recollections. He can wake up in bliss. So this is also important. Sometimes we can sleep well, but we cannot wake up comfortably, right? Frightened by something, we wake up. So we can wake up in bliss. This is also good things to do experience. So his faculties are peaceful. So be careful this one. Faculties are peaceful. So that means when we know the calm, when our mind becomes very calm and peaceful, our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind will become calm and peaceful. So here are faculties. That means sense faculties will become peaceful. So frequently I have already explain something about al and their quality. For example, child and Gubeka. When we talk about 10 types of equanimity, I have already talked about child and Gubeka. For example, an al may see the sign of an object. His mind can change to understand an object easily because he has very strong concentrations. He has already Eradicate all types of defilements. Similarly, understandable to designable. He can they can change easily. So then when we can attain nirvana, it will be easier for us to change our minds because we know peacefulness or nirvana. This is also one thing. Another one is his mind is peaceful. So this is also important. When our minds are not very peaceful, sure, our speech, our actions are not very calm, not very peaceful. Mind is the leader, the foreigner. As we have learned in Dhammapada, all the formations are, all the Dhammas are preceded by mind, led by mind, made by mind. So that means 
our mind will be peaceful when we can recollect this one as of Nirvana. Five. And this one. He has more shame and more dread. So this, that one has, we have already explained that one before. He did Udapa. The project are of human beings. The world has already talked about it. We human, we human beings will be saying to animals if we don't have moral shame and moral dread. We will not respect anybody. We will not respect our parents, our elder sister, elder brother, or senior, or anybody. When we have moral shame and moral dread, we may have respect. We may respect people. We know how to respect people. This is also important in our community. So if we can practice recognize our peace of Nirvana, we may have more shame, more dread. This is also really very important for us for human beings in the community. Then again, six, here's a result to attain higher states. Of course, we wish to attain higher destinations. We, we wish our mind was inclined to attain Nirvana, right? When we have experience, sure, we will like higher states. For example, if you have seen the light, you want to see the meter very near to you, very close to, very close goal, you know, very close targets for you. That's why we can make aspirations or we can wish to attain to attain Nimita or to see Nimita. If you have seen the Nimita, then your mind will incline to attain Jhana. It's very close to you. Similarly now, when our mind can incline to Nirvana, we can also understand it's very close to us. Our mind will incline to higher states. For example, when we have very strong inside knowledge, our mind will incline to attain Nirvana do you attain soda body path and fruition knowledge? If we have attained soda body path and fruition knowledge, that our mind will incline to attain sakadagami path and fruition knowledge. If we have attained sakadagami, our mind will incline to attain anagami path and fruition. Similarly, if we have attained anagami path and fruition, our mind will incline to attain hardship. Our mind will incline to higher states higher attainment. Then seven, he's respected and honored by his fellow Dhamma friends. So this is also important. So if we are respectable, worthy of respect in the community, then we are influential. If we are honored by our community, we are influential, we can say like this. So, if we have calmness of the minds, then many people have devotions, when many people have faith in us, it will be for the benefit of the, their practice, for the benefit of ourselves. Okay, now eight. He can be reborn in the higher destination, as you have already known that. If we cannot attain Path and fruition knowledge in this very life, we can be reborn in the higher destinations because of the practice of recollection of peace. So today we have already talked about the recollection of peace, about nibbana. So we have already known many things about nibbana. Actually, there are many many informations about nibbana. Then there are many people they ask about Nibbana, right? Pandi, what is it called Nibbana? How should we understand Nibbana? Mostly I avoid this kind of question. No, I will not, I don't want to answer this kind of questions. Because it will be endless. If we say one thing, then there will be many other complaints, many other 
counter questions is very far from imaginary. We have one scholar in WhatsApp, we call it in WhatsApp Seattle, not very far from Mandalay, also not very far from Sakai. So one of the laymen from Mandalay asks about Nirvana. He asks many Seattle, many famous well-known teachers in Mandalay. Only one question is about Nirvana. Nobody can satisfy him that he come to Wachet Seattle, reported all the things he has, he has experienced. Seattle, I have already asked many teachers in Mandalay about Nirvana, but nobody can satisfy me. Seattle, can you explain me about Nirvana? Then Wachet Seattle understands that if he explains, then Sure, he cannot satisfy that man. That's why he just say very simple things. If you wish to know Nirvana, instead of asking many questions or instead of answering, okay, let's practice practically, right? Then you should you just go and practice for your own attainment. I will practice for my own attainment. After attaining, okay, we can come and discuss each other. It will be much better for you. Then that man cannot ask any question anymore. Similarly now, you may have many questions about Nirvana. I have already answered many questions according to Visodhi Mega and many other texts. You may still have many other questions also, right? Anyway, Nirvana is our aim, our target, our final goal, where we wish to, where, where we, what we want to attain. When we know the value of Nirvana, we will, we will like to attain Nirvana. If we don't have great intentions or if we don't know the value of Nirvana, sure, we will not, we don't want to attain Nirvana. So it will take time to know that Nirvana is valuable. It will take time that Nirvana is really, really peaceful come and end of suffering. If we can know the quality, the value of Nirvana, we can practice the recollection of beats according to this Vesodhi Maga. Okay, today I will stop here. May you all be able to practice the teaching of the Buddha. May you all be able to realize the final cessation and of suffering Nirvana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Question one, dear Sayadaw, Sayadaw explained that craving will join to four kinds of life. How mm -hmm. do we understand the craving in the case of being reborn as beta, animal, or hell being life? Nobody will crave to be reborn to this kind of life. Mm -hmm. Sadhu, sadhu. <clears throat> okay. You know, if we are doing agosala, we are automatically hair being, you know? So, okay, the main thing is, if we are, if we, if we are craving for many wrong things, we also have craving for beta or anime or hair beings, but unknowingly, okay? So one more thing, when we are born, okay, one more thing here, right? I have to explain one more thing about it. There are many people, you know, when they practice dependent originations, some of people, they are born as animal, for example, right? Okay, practically, we have one story in Tamabara, Gosaka. In his past lives, he's weary of journey, although thirsty, hungry. Then he just spent overnight in one, one, one village, in one house. They give, they give very good food for their dogs. We're saying that, oh, they are, that dog is very lucky, you know? We have that kind of attachment, you know? Oh, their life is more comfortable. This is also called craving for animal life. We can be reborn 
and, and animal rams for that kind of attachment. Okay, this is also one of the things. In your environment, you can see many people like that. Okay. Question two. Dear Sada, could Sada explain how to practically value Nibbana so that we can practice recollection of peace? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we have many valuable things. How do you decide it's valuable? They are impermanent, but it's valuable, it's still valuable for our life, right? For example, we love our parents. They are valuable for us. That also, we have many valuable things like ornaments, jewelry, jewelries, also many other valuable things. It depends on our mind, right? We value many different things. So if we know that Nibbana is more important than valuable things, let me just practically, we know the value of Nibbana. We value Nibbana. Okay, practically, if we know Nibbana is more important than money, sure, that means you value Nibbana. Okay? Mandani Siado, for Upasama Nusati, this Upasama, does it mean Nibbana? Nibbana is out of imagination. Mm -hmm. If someone has not really seen the Nibbana, if he mm -hmm. practice Upasama Nusati, would there be mm -hmm. a kind of imagination only? Okay, we can also say like imaginary, right? But you know, sometimes if we know the value, if we know clearly, we cannot say only imaginary, right? For example, like a, we have inside knowledge, we also have no the end of the life, end of samsara, then in this kind, we cannot say imaginary. We can say experience like that. Okay? When Dami Siado, for the Satna Vinyana Titi, uh, the Nana Kaya, Nanata Kaya and Nanata Sanni. Mm. So here, Sanni, Nanata Sanni, mm. means different Patisanti consciousness. So sure. this question, her question is, this sanya here, sanyi, what does it mean by sanyi here? Why mm -hmm. it use nanata? Mm -hmm. Okay, three sanyi. Okay, okay. Why nanata sanyi become patisandhi's consciousness? Mm -hmm. Okay, so sanya is a perception, right? It was a sanyi, the one who have sanya perception. So actually that one is only just, you know, I just cut only one piece. So, you know, the sentence is very long. I just cut. Okay, anyway, there's a statement about rebelling in consciousness. And that's why here yeah, I can translate it as a rebelling in consciousness. Okay. When that means, yeah, though, in the practice of Anabana Sati, mm -hmm. Must a uh, meditator practice until subtle breath, then the nimitta can achieve patisa, uh, patipaka nimitta. Or mm -hmm. if a meditator doesn't follow the four steps of anapana step practice, mm -hmm. it just focus on do the in breath and out breath. As long mm -hmm. as the concentration is good enough, then the mm -hmm. nimitta will automatically uh, attain uh, patipaka nimitta. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you are practicing Anapanasti, actually you will follow four steps naturally. For example, if you are an experienced meditator, right? Sometimes you have you have been practicing a very long time. Mostly you may have set the breath. Other than you don't need to follow four steps. It will happen naturally, okay? In this case, the main thing is that as long as you can focus on the natural breath, also you are skillful. You can see Nimita, you can also attain Jhana. Okay? Why a meditator must discern Nama Rupa or see Nama Rupa through the Bawanga mind door? Is there any reference from the Tibitaka? And also, so many Yopan. And how this. Bawanga Maido, see the 
the kind the VT, mm -hmm. and how this uh Bawanga my dog can see this dharma. What is the uh, principle or what is the theory behind it, behind it? Okay, actually, I have already explained that one in the first jhana. Okay, okay, there I mentioned something. Especially, you may have no Anubhava Upasana about Venerable Sariputta. So there, Venerable Sariputta was practicing, right? Descending all the mental factors one by one. In that part, I mentioned what to Aramana, two different things. After descending what to an Aramana, we can also see the, na, na, all the Namas like that. This is the statement mentioned in that part. This is a reference in the in that sutras, right? That's why we say that one. Okay. Yes, yeah, though. For Sotabati Arya Arya person, when they try to enjoy the sensual happiness, would there be akusala? And this enjoying sensual happiness is ayoniso manasikara. Would they consider akusala mind? Of course, Sotabana also can have Agusala. Right? Sakalami also can have Agusala. Nagami also have Agusala. But their Agusala is not so strong that they cannot be reborn in the hell or in the four lower realms. Wendami Siado, in daily life, he try, he try to be Yoniso Manasikara so that he is so that he is not attached on, he doesn't attach on uh, loba, dosa, and moha, try to mm -hmm. accept this loba, dosa, and moha, then the mind will be more carefree, more free, and no suffering. Actually, we should not be afraid nothingness, of should not be afraid of nothingness, or what, or alaba, Everything alaba. is alaba. Mm -hmm. Alaba means laba alaba. Mm -hmm. We should not be afraid of it. alaba gain and mm -hmm. uh, the loss. Mm -hmm. Everything is uh, everything is because of everything has its conditions. Everything happens because of conditions. Mm -hmm. So say so, so, so. This is actually is a statement. His understand it's a statement that everything is based on conditions. So we should not we should uh, have these attentions. Try not to attach to mm -hmm. loba, dosa, and moha. Try to accept them. Then we mm -hmm. will not be suffering. Mm -hmm. Okay, accepting also be careful, right? We have like a, some loba are unacceptable. Okay, some of we accept it, okay, it doesn't matter. It depends on situation also, okay? Uh, question nine. Dear Sarado, Wandami Sarado, Sukihotu, good evening. Please, Sarado, advise how to understanding of this sentence. Number one, mm -hmm. Nibbana Paramam Sukham. Number two, Nibbana Paramam Sunyam. Sada, thank you very much. We sincerely, Nyana Darika. Sada. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nibbana Paraman Sukham. Okay, Nibbana is a superior happiness, superior bliss. We can say like that. Actually, this we can find this one in Dhammapada, right? Anyway, so compared to other happiness, Nibbana is a superior, the strongest, supreme happiness. We can say like that. Similarly, like Nibbana Brahman Sunya, Sunya means divides or emptiness. So when we talk about Sunyata, we also have to know something about like a need, sorry, we also like a Sami Nivasi Karaka, we got something like that. Okay, for example, Sami me ownership. So, for example, we have Namarubas, right? It doesn't belong to us, it will arise and perish naturally. Another also can be considered as a sunya. But here in the case of nirvana, this is not sunyata like anatta. This is like a emptiness of namarubhats. Okay? How to practice four element meditation? 
if uh, someone practice sorry if someone practice me, uh, four element meditation when the body become bright and brilliant would they consider nimitta for this four element practice and mm -hmm. and this nimitta would they be different would it be different from the anapana nimitta sure it will be different so Okay, for about Nimitta, it will be a little bit difficult to explain now because seeing the lights are different, when we can design very well, your body will change to translucence, you know, very bright as a translucence. So when, when you can break down, you know, the like ice block, a translucent body, then you can see the particles, like this, this also called, we can say, the improvement of four elements. Okay, seeing the light, it can be, in any situations, whatever you, after you focus, you can see the light. Seeing the light and seeing the nimitta will be two different things, okay? We cannot say seeing the nimitta, exactly. Vana me said all. So if we do the kusala or akusala kama, so at the end, still we're going to the to rebirth in the samsara. So how can we practice to escape from the samsara? Because we we do the kusala thing also go to into uh, to rebirth and akusala also rebirth. So mm -hmm. what, so why should we do and how can do uh, to escape from escape from the suffering and the samsara? Mm -hmm. Okay. So actually, we have many different similes. Okay, we may have wine lump, for example, wine lump. Huh? We have you use wine, we have like a wick. Then we can also lit the lights, that can be flame. If there's a no wine, no wick, then no more flame, no more lights. Similarly, now we have gamma, then we also have like a defilement. Gamma is like a wick. Gamma is like wine. It supports the flame. So the word I just explained, when we are going to remove a tree, don't cut the trunks. Don't, don't cut the trunks. That cuts the roots. If we can uproot a tree, it cannot regrow anymore. So similarly, as long as we have defilements and then gamma, we can be reborn. Bora didn't say to cut the gamma. Bora just said to cut the defilements. If we can cut the defilements, then our gamma will stop. Then we can attain Nibbana. Okay? So, okay, according to Bora teaching, we are not cutting the trees or trunk. We are just cutting the roots of the suffering. Not only gamma, Right? We have to cut the roots of gamma, defilements. Okay, briefly, to cut defilement, we have many different steps of practice. For the morality, also cutting the defilements. Also, concentration, also cutting the defilements. We must now also cutting the defilements. We can chain path and fruition knowledge. We uprooted the defilements. Okay, so that means when we can have the ship, no more kusla gamma. No more Akusala Kama. Of course, that's why no more defilements, right? No more defilements, no more Kusala, no more Akusala. That's why they cannot be reborn anymore. Like uh, no more wick, no more wine, then no more flay. Then no more roots, no more trees. When I say at all, so Nibbana is the place to where there is no more Nama and Rupa. So, but so what 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 is that field the nibbana and and how can we understand that because there are no nama rupa so what what do uh, to feel nibbana how to feel nibbana mm -hmm. no feeling also right it totally cessations of everything just cessations okay i will give previous example this is not for, this also for, you know in ratana soda emission kinam puranan the one right no, that is number one. That we have that, that kind of that stands in Ratana Sutta. Well, there are mentions one simile. So if we 
lit a candlelight, right? Then there's a wick, there's a wax. Then because of the flame, because of heat, the wax wear also become like a shorter and shorter. The wick also becomes shorter and shorter. Finally, no more wax, no more wicks. Then the flame disappear. We're going to say where the flame go. Nobody know where the flame go. Similarly, Namaruba disappear. We're going to also say where Namarubas go. Where's the feeling? Where's the perception? We're going to know anything anymore. This is totally cessation, like extinguishing fire. Like we're going to know where the flame go after extinguishing. Okay? Question 13. Dear Shadow, please Shadow advice again how to understanding this sentence, Sape Dharma Anatta, an example, what the Dharma refer to. Shadow, thank you very much. We sincerely, Yana Darika, Sadhu Sadhu. Okay. So, Sape Dharma Anatta. So, all Dharmas are Anatta, known self, right? So when we talk about Sefe Sankara, it just talk about Sankara. When we talk about Dhamma, it also cover all types of Dhamma, including Nibbana. Everything, including Nibbana, are another non-self. So briefly, Dhamma here refer to everything, including Nibbana. Okay? Okay, now? No question, right? Yeah. So last week, one, one yogi asked me about the human being who passed away from human run and born in Dewaran, sorry, Brahma Wards, right? About Buddhist Sandy. Also, one copy also sent me some message about to check all these things. And I'm finding many, many sources. Now you're finished, okay? Then, any other question for anybody? Okay. Yeah, there, I can hear you. there is one question about this yoga. Just now, see, I don't mm -hmm. see about yoga. Uh, yoga in Bali, there is mm -hmm. one word yoga kema. Kema mm -hmm. is uh, to be safe, but yoga safe, is... Yeah. So yoga, kema, how to understand these uh, Pali terms? Okay, so that means... Okay, here yoga means, we say, like, like a yoke, right? So that means there are the disturbance or danger produced by yoke. So kema means secure. So our mind will be safe or secure, or maybe, maybe free from, all types of suffering produced by yoga. We can say like that, right? Question 14. Yes, yeah. can we say Nibbana in daily life? Uh -huh. This is a impossible, right? We're going to say Nibbana in daily life. So our daily life is very far from Nibbana, especially for ordinary people. So for our heart, sure, Nibbana can be their daily life. They can enter into Nibbana anytime, right? Okay. Uh, question number 15. Dear Sado, Wonder Me Sado, please explain Akasa Kasina has four or eight jhana. Mm -hmm. Okay, Akasa Kasina may have only four jhana because we cannot discern space on the space. For example, in the case of Art Kasina, we can discern space on it. We can also expand the space. Then we can focus on the boundless space. We can take immaterial jhana, right? So these are very basis of immaterial jhana. In the case of Akasa Kasina, there's already Akasa. We cannot design any space on it. That's why only four jhana, no eight jhana. Okay. Uh, question 16. Dear Shadow, can we say temporary nibbana? Mm -hmm. We can we cannot say temporary nibbana, right? Even nibbana, it must be permanent. Vana mi sẽ đó một vị thánh dự lưu muốn đạt được bậc thánh. Asakadagami thì theo when the person the sotabana he already the person already attend sotabana, so he want to practice after sakadagami, so he also need to follow the sixteen vipassana nyana. Is that sẽ đó? Okay, so if we have attained sotabadi mega, he can start with udhyapaya nyana. We can start from Uri Uriyavayanyana, not sustain is an origins. Okay. When the Misiado, why a lay person must ordain after he attained Arahant? Can 
why can't he continue to stay at home or as a lay person? Mm -hmm. Okay, so human glow is unworthy of the quality of an, an, an arahat. So an arahat quality is very high, no? That's why he cannot live in or in or the or lay life. He has to be all day. For beginners, should he focus on one kamatana in order to practice until attaining jhana? Or should he change to different change uh, to different uh, kamatana? For example, practice one hour in anabanasati, another hour in upasamanusati. Mm -hmm. Okay. So actually, we recommend to continue practicing one object when you have some difficulty. For example, like a lot of thoughts, a lot of distractions, distractions. Then you can change object temporarily for a few minutes until you can overcome the problem. I'd rather come back to the main object. It will be more beneficial, more useful. Okay, next one. Vanami said all. So the Sotabana and Sagadakami, they still have the Akusala Mai sometimes. And can Sano give an example of what Akusala, exactly what the Akusala Mai? Can Sano give some example? Okay. okay. For example, we have a Three types of craving, right? They have a gamma dana, they have attachment to sensual pleasure. They also have bhava dana, attachment to their life. So, this is an example. Similarly, they may have dosa, hatred, anger. But their dosa is not so strong that they cannot be living in the hell, in the four states. They may have mana, bright. But mostly, Although they have mana, they can accept the truth. You know, there are some mana. When we are so proud or so arrogant, we don't we are not ready to accept the truth, right? For anagami, so is for noble noble person, they will accept the truth. Although they have mana, it will be different. So there are many other defilements they cannot eradicate. Or well, they don't have any doubt about the Buddha's, Dhamma and Sangha's quality. They don't they don't have any doubt about three trainings. They don't have any doubt about their past, present, future existence or different originations. It's very clear. So for Anagami, Anagami has already has already irrigated Kama Chanda. They may not get married. They will not live together with their wife or husband. No more testament to sensual pleasure. This is the, the power of Anagami. Also, Anagami had already irrigated Dosa. And so they may have they don't have any draws up, no fear like that. So one more thing. They may also have mana, bright. As I have already mentioned, they may have they also have they also accept the truth. Then they also have right other defilements, but not so strong that they cannot be reborn in the lower realms. I can eradicate all types of defilements. This is different. Okay. In King Tung, I said, what I mean, said all, do for them did ban. The Buddha entered uh, Paridibana, Mahaparinibana, with uh, four jhana. So, the four jhana of the Buddha, how how the Buddha entered Mahaparinibana and the, the completely vanish of the body, uh, the Nama and the Rupa. Mm -hmm. uh, Sadhu Sadhu said all. Okay, I have to, I have to check in Mahabri Nevana Sutta. So we have many things about, many information about Buddha's Pri Nirvana. Buddha also enter into many different types of the attainment, which means Buddha enter all types of attainment, we can also say like that. So after entering into many different types of attainment, the Buddha enter into Brinivana. Okay, I should check now. Okay, so I cannot find all sorts. Okay, later I, I, I will find right how he enter Brinivana. Actually, the Buddha enter into many different attainments. Okay, okay, I will say what some example. The Benedict Nuruta also follow 
all the attainment. Was I will enter into the first jhana or anabana city. And then I also enter. Second jhana also like that. So Bora enter into Niroda Samabati also many times. After that, I Bora enter into Bring Nirvana. I think this from Mitta Jhana or something like that. I'm not sure. So I'm gonna find the source. Okay, so later I will, I will find the source, right? Okay, next one. Uh, question to Nitu. Dear Shadow, Wandami Shadow, Sotapan is still having some small fears in daily life, like wild animal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shadow. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Okay. So Sotapati and Sotapan and Sakadagami, they haven't eradicated the dosa yet. That's why they have fear, worry, or sorry, that kind of things. So it doesn't mean that, although they have fear that they will not break any precepts, it will be different from ordinary people, okay? Okay. Mama Bunya Bagam Sava Sadanam Bajemi De Sabe Me Samam Bunya Bagam Lavandu Sadu Sadu Sadu. Sadu.